In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Today the church celebrates the solemnity of the ascension of the Lord. After being with his disciples after the resurrection, it is time for him to return to the Father. And so Luke tells us he was taken up into heaven in the presence of the believers. The Lord will come again in glory, and until that time, we wait patiently, and we work doing what he has told us to do, to make disciples, to love one another, to serve each other, and all those in need. And so to prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let's call to mind the ways that we have failed to live up to what the Lord expects, the ways we fail to, to love. And trusting in God's mercy, we ask for pardon and peace. Lord Jesus, you have shown us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you've given us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Good Shepherd leading us into everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Gladden us with holy joys, Almighty God, and make us rejoice with devout thanksgiving. For the ascension of Christ your Son is our exaltation. And where the head has gone before in glory, the body is called to follow in hope. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In the first book, Theophilus, I dealt with all that Jesus did and taught until the day he was taken up. After giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen, he presented himself alive to them 
by many proofs after he had suffered, appearing to them during the forty days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While meeting with them, he enjoined them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, about which you have heard me speak, for John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. When, he had, when they had gathered together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He answered them, It is not for you to know the times or seasons that the Father has established by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and throughout Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him from their sight. While they were looking intently at the sky, as he was going, suddenly two men dressed in white garments stood beside them. They said, Men of Galilee, why are you standing there looking at the sky? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will return the same way as you have seen him going into heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, may the, may the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation, resulting in knowledge of him. May the eyes of your heart be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope that belongs to his call, what are the riches of his glory in his inheritance among the holy ones, and what is the supreme passing greatness of his power for us who believe, in accordance with the exercise of his great might, which he worked in Christ, raising him from the dead, and seating him at his right hand in the heavens, far above every principality, authority, power, and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he put all things beneath his feet, and gave his head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness 
of the one who fills all things in every way. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. The eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had ordered them. When they saw him, they worshipped, but they doubted. Then Jesus approached and said to them, All power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always, until the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. This Feast of the Ascension has more significance than ever before in this year, 2020, because there are so many striking parallels between the experience of the 11 disciples and the other believers and our experience in the church and in the world today. Things have been going along beautifully for the disciples. Jesus had been raised from the dead and was making himself present to them. He was providing breakfast on the beach. He was appearing to them. He was offering them peace and he was continuing to teach them. Things had never been better for the early, small Christian community. All was going so well. And then, in one day, it changed. They saw Jesus, the one that they loved, taken from them, taken up into heaven. He was no longer with them the way that he had been, especially during those 40 days since his resurrection. Things were different. And they really did three things, which is what we're doing now. They prayed, they trusted, and they wait. And isn't that what we're doing? We're praying perhaps more than ever, certainly at times more fervently than ever, because we have more to pray for, more to ask God to deliver us from, to help us with as we struggle. That, of course, good prayer always demands trust. Is God listening to me? Is the Lord really there? Have we been abandoned? Are we being punished? We need to trust. And, as both the church and our civil authorities have told us, we have to wait. We have to wait. We have to stay put, not in Jerusalem, but in our own homes. You know, today is the beginning of the first novena. Many young people don't even know what a novena is, but it's nine days of prayer dedicated for a specific petition, begging God for nine days of prayer. And 
The novena comes from the Latin word for nine. It dates back to this period of time that we now enter of nine days between the ascension of the Lord and the descent of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost on the disciples and Mary. And so for generations, it's been traditional when we need something and want something, we pray in novena for nine days. Mother Teresa had a wonderful uh, devotion. She uh, prayed the uh, novena of nine memorares uh, in a row when she needed something uh, really fast. And then she prayed uh, a tenth memorare in Thanksgiving. She is a great example of someone who really trusted that God would provide. But we need to pray. We need to pray by ourselves. We need to pray when we can with others. And of course, we're praying just through the use of technology as we gather to celebrate this Eucharist. So we need to pray. Pray in whatever way works for you. Pray in whatever way you feel drawn. Just sit aware that you're in the presence of God. This is the month of May, and I love Our Lady. And just last week we celebrated the feast of Our Lady of Fatima. So I would recommend too, pray the rosary. Pray the Divine Mercy Chaplet. Pray your favorite prayers. Pray an act of contrition before you go to sleep. And thank God for the day in the morning. But we need to pray more. We also need to trust. I hope you noticed that when Matthew tells us what the state of the disciples was as they went to the mountaintop as they were directed, Matthew tells us they worshipped. They knew that God was with them. They knew that Jesus was the Son of God, that he had been raised from the dead, that he was ascending to the right hand of the Father. But Matthew adds, they doubted. They doubted. Even though he had been with them, even though they had seen his miracles, even though he reassured them, even though he wished them peace, they doubted. And so we should not beat ourselves up when we doubt. Of course we doubt. It's only human to doubt. All of us doubt. But we should not stay there. We should not get used to doubting. As soon as we doubt, the simple prayer, Jesus, I trust in you, can banish that doubt from our hearts and from our minds. We need to trust. When things don't look like they're going well, we need to trust. When we're not sure what's going to happen, we need to trust. When things are closing in on us, we need to trust. We need to pray and we need to trust. And Jesus told the disciples, do not leave Jerusalem. Go there and stay there and wait. And again, isn't that what we're doing? But isn't it what we do really all our lives? We're waiting. We're waiting each and every day for God to speak to us, to God appear to us in some way. And God does through other people. We're waiting now for an end to this pandemic, or at least to this period of it. We're waiting for a vaccination to be created. We're waiting to flatten the curve so that it will be safe once again to become close to each other. And waiting is difficult. But just as Jesus told the disciples to wait and gave them the ability to do so, so he will for us as well. The other thing the disciples had to wait for that we need to wait for all the time is to know what God has planned for the church, for the world, but even for our own lives. We get impatient. We want to know, God, what are you going to do? And Jesus said, listen, you just wait. It will be revealed when it's time. One thing I've learned is you never want to get ahead of God. God's plan is perfect. His will is perfect, and all we need to do is stay a step or two behind it and surrender to it each and every day. And when we do that, life will be more peaceful, and we decide then when we decide to 
go our own way or decide to even tell the Lord, no, this has to happen and this is what I'm going to do. Again, do we trust that God loves us, that God will do what is best, that even when things are difficult, that even when we suffer, God is in control, God has us in his hand, and God is love, and will never do anything to harm us. You know, at one point I was living in a place that people were fearful, it could be dangerous, and actually that's happened to me several times in my life. But I have a good friend, and she and I were talking once, and we realized, what's the worst thing that could happen? Well, they could kill us. What's the best thing that could happen? They could kill us. It's the same thing. Death often is the one thing most people fear, but it's just a passing moment. And what this entire Easter season has been about is that when this world is over, we are going to enter into a world that we can't even begin to imagine. St. John says in his first letter, we're children of God now. What we shall later be, we cannot even imagine. God has a beautiful and awesome life waiting for us. All we need to do is to pray each day. That we can do what God asks for us each day. That when we sin, when we make a mess of things, when we feel weak, all we need to do is trust. Trust in God's love for us. And then we need to wait. To wait for opportunities to love God and to serve others. And to wait for that moment when the Lord will come for us. When we can finally just surrender ourselves into his arms. When he will bring us into that place that has been prepared for us. And especially during May. And especially in this beautiful church of St. Mary's. It's a comfort to know that since we were little kids, each and every day, we've been praying, asking Mary, pray for us now and at the hour of our death. She will be there praying for us. All those we've known and loved who've gone before us will be waiting with us as well. This life is a beautiful one. And friends and family have accused me of wanting to leave it too soon. But when we do go, there's no reason to fear. God will give us life. It's already been poured into our hearts. It's a promise. And God is faithful. When God says something will happen, it will happen. So on this Ascension Thursday, let's ask God for that triple grace to be able to pray, to be able to trust, and to be able to wait. United with Christians throughout the world, together we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, 
I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God desires to give us all good things, and so now we present the Lord with our needs. The response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For the Pope, bishops, priests, deacons, and all who are entrusted with leadership in the Church, that they will continue to proclaim the presence of the risen Lord in word and deed, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are working to end the pandemic, that God may inspire and give us insight to all who are caring for the sick, developing treatments, and researching vaccines, we pray to the Lord. For health care workers and all who work in essential jobs, that God will protect them and their families from illness and give them strength to fulfill their duties, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all of us as we long to worship together, that we lift each other up in prayer daily, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For the sick and the hospitalized, that they will know the healing power of the risen Christ especially all those with COVID-19, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, that they will rejoice in the reward of everlasting life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of the parish who are remembered at this liturgy, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the prayers that we hold in our hearts, that they will be heard by our loving Father, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our God. prayer. Loving Father, we do present you with all of our needs with great confidence. We pray in the name of your Son, Jesus, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. And may the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. We offer sacrifice now in supplication, O Lord, to honor the wondrous ascension of your Son. Grant, we pray, that through this most holy exchange, we too may rise up to the heavenly realms. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For the Lord Jesus, the King of glory, conqueror of sin and death, ascended today to the highest heavens as the angels gazed in wonder. Mediator between God and man, judge of the world and Lord of hosts, he ascended not to distance himself from our lowly state, but that we, his members, might be confident of following where he, our Lord and founder, has gone before. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the death of the Lord until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial, of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, 
that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, who art, art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am now worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be.
an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who allow those on earth to celebrate divine mysteries, grant, we pray, that Christian hope may draw us onward to where our nature is united with you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. God. Keep with gladness and the joy.
Thank you. 